You are now tuned in to the network. Bruh, bruh, bruh. The YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics and dumbs it down to a more simpler language. And today's topic is section 1.4 of the CCNA exam. It's identify interface and cable issues, specifically collisions, errors, mismatch, and duplex and or speed. Let's go ahead and take a look at the exam blueprint to see where we came from and where we are headed. All right, so this is the exam blueprint that we look at on every video, CCNA exam version 1.0. The exam code is 200-301, so that way you know you are signed up for the correct exam. You know, Cisco has multiple exams. They've got DevNet. They've got all kind of wire, you know, tracks for wireless and all kind of stuff. This, again, is for route switch. The basically associate level exam. For the last video, we covered the concepts of PoE, which is basically a way to power on your devices over Ethernet cable, you know, rather than having to plug it up against, you know, to an outlet in the wall. Today, again, we're going to cover identify interface and cabling issues. And after that, we're going to go over comparing TCP and UDP. Notice it says they are compared. We may try to get our hands dirty, open up a packet, you know, Wireshark or something like that take a look at the difference between the two types of traffic there so uh what are the interface and cabling issues that we can run into obviously they are collisions errors a mismatch in duplex and speed right well in the last video we talked about what collisions are remember was it last video no it was actually in the connections video that's what we talked about what collisions are collisions are when packets you know collide on the network right and then once that happens you'll have a slowdown in traffic you know, you'll have, you know, basically a uh, lost transmission. Let's take a look at the official definition though. A collision occurs when two devices send a packet at the same time on a shared network segment. This is our media right here, right? These cables right here, we consider them media, right? But we're, since we're all sharing that media, we call it shared media, right? That's what they mean by shared network segment. The packets collide and both devices must send the packets again, which reduces network efficiency. So these little circles right here lets us know where a collision could occur. Why is this whole thing considered a, what's called a collision domain? Well, remember what we said about hubs, right? Hubs takes a frame. Once it comes in, it floods it out of every port, except from the port, it, except from the port it came from. So we had PCA right here, then a frame out this pack face right here is going to flood it out that port, that port, and that port. And now this is where all the the, the uh, collisions could occur. We could have a collision occur right here. We have a collision occur right here. And we could have a collision occur right there, right? It's not going to come back out this port. It's just going to send it out of every port except from where it came from. Again, this would consider be a, considered an entire collision domain. This right here would be considered a collision domain. We could have a collision occur uh, on this segment right here. However, there's only one device there, so it's less likely for a collision to happen right there. How do we detect collisions? Well, we know we're going to have a slowdown in network connectivity, right? But one command that we really want to know to kind of look this up or to, you know, to investigate this issue is the show interfaces command. As you can see right here, this is an example of the show interface command. This is one that's a very important command here, right? You're going to run this a lot whenever you're troubleshooting any kind of layer one or any kind of cabling issues and stuff like that. As you can see right here, I got circled at the bottom. We got zero collisions there, zero late collisions right there. That's how we can determine whether we're having collisions or not. And again, you'll you'll see a slowdown in traffic. Sometimes you may need to do a little deep dive with you know uh, with some kind of packet capture like that. But if, you know, in a quick when you're in a quick pinch and you need to you know see you know some quick statistics on on your cabling and stuff like that. Show interface is a really helpful command. This is one that you really want to know, especially for the CCNA exam. This is a, a fundamental show command that you want to know. Again, this is a prime example of the show interface command. Uh, we have here uh, what interface it is, right? In this case, it's FA00, so the fast Ethernet 00 port. We have the IP addressing information. We've got the MTU size, the bandwidth, and stuff like that. You know, don't get too intimidated by this command because there's a, lot, a wealth of information here, right? But the more you look at it, the more you'll quickly realize, okay, I know the CRC errors are right here. Bandwidth is right here. Uh, outputs, you know, we got input right uh, out, input right here, and output is usually right below it, right there. See, so the more you see this command, the more you run these other show commands. That's how you start to memorize where things are at. So that's why I say lab every day. Well, I didn't make that up, but this is a moniker, you know, your boy Duane Lightfoot came up with, and I, I ingrained, you know, instilled that in my mind too. Labbing every day. Once you do, you know, you do these show commands, and you um you know, do this stuff hands-on a lot, 
you'll start to know where a lot of this information is. Another thing that the show interface command will tell us, when we look at the top right here, we've got the first thing that is very important here. We see that FA00 is up right here. This first part right here lets us know about layer one. We, we talked about what layer one is before, right? In the previous videos, layer one is the OSI of the OSI model is the physical layer. So we're talking about cabling, the electrical signals, you know, hubs, stuff like that. That's all considered layer one. So this lets us know that layer one is, is working and is operational. This second part of the line, line protocol is up, lets us know layer two is fine. So that's layer one, this is layer two. Layer two is what? MAC addresses, VLANs, frames, and stuff like that. When we know that line protocol is up, that lets us know layer two is fine. So we're receiving MAC address information and stuff like that. That's the two things that we wanna know. We wanna make sure that layer one is up, layer two is up, right? Obviously we'll know where layer three is up when we can ping and stuff like that, where we're receiving routes and things like that, right? But that's the main two things we want. We are concerned with when we're, when we're, we're talking about cabling. Layer one, also layer two as well, but these two, Depending on what their status is, this part of the line and that part of the line will let us will equal something over here. So when it's up up, that lets us know it's connected. And the next slide, I'll show you the two combinations. We can have layer two down and then layer or layer one down and layer two also down. So that'll, that'll be a combination of down down, and obviously, you know, it's going to say not connected. These are the combination, the possible status codes. So remember, this is the status right here. That right there is the status, right? So when we're looking at the statuses right here, that one was up, right? Line status was up and the protocol status was also up. Therefore, it is connected. This lets us know that the interface is working, right? Now, if layer one was down, right? And layer two was down, but says er disabled, this lets us know when a port is er disabled like that, that means port security has disabled the interface. Now we haven't talked about uh, port security yet or anything like that, but basically it's a feature that we can put on each of our switch ports, right? And uh, and basically secure the port, basically. That, that, what, a, what a great definition I came up with, right? Defining the definition with the definition, but it's a way to kind of like uh, add security to the port. So like if we wanted to say uh, only two devices can, uh, two devices can connect to this port or we can uh, allow, uh, or maybe we don't want nobody connecting to this port. As soon as somebody plugs up, it'll say, it'll shut the port down because we don't like say we have an open jack somewhere in the room or something like that, or in the lobby. We don't want just people just plugging up their laptops all willy nilly. So we would set up port security. Well, if port security is on that port, right? And somebody plugs up their laptop, it'll go er disabled just like that. That's what er disabled mean. So we'll go further in depth in er disabled uh, and port security and stuff like that in another uh, in another section. Actually, section 5.7, configure layer two security features. Uh, as you can see right here, port security. So we'll go further in depth in port security in section 5.7 right here. Now, when we have layer one as up and layer two as down, yes, we can have a combination of up and down. It'll say not connect on the interface status. And this is not expected on LAN switch physical interfaces. Typically you'll see this on a virtual interface, like say a, a loop back or, or a uh, like interface VLAN one or something like that. We'll talk more about routed interfaces. That's where you're gonna see when it's up down like this right here. Now, when it's, when layer one is down, layer two is down, you guessed it, it's not connect, is gonna be the status. This basically means no cable, bad cable, wrong cable pinouts. Yes, you could have a cable that, remember a, a ethernet cable, like this here has like eight individual cables inside it, right? If they're flipped wrong or if they if they did it wrong when they when they well, like when they put this cable together, you're gonna see it's not connect like that. That's what a wrong pinout is. You'll see speed mismatches for this uh, combination. Matter of fact, uh, when we do the hands-on video, I'll change the speeds and show y'all what happens when you know when you have uh, you know a combination. It's gonna turn down down just like this. Or the, uh, the next device could be powered off. You can have the shutdown command on the other device, on the neighboring device, not on this particular device that we're on, and, and or it could be the other devices or disabled or air disabled. And lastly, uh, if you have layer one is administratively down and protocol status is down, then it's gonna say disabled like this right here. So this part right here is gonna say disabled. That's gonna say down and that's gonna say admin down or administratively down right there. That's gonna let us know that we sh manually shut down this port. So 
Uh, that's a, pretty much the easy one right there. And I'll show y'all an example of that. You know, I'm pretty sure some of y'all have seen it before if y'all made it this far in my video series. So now errors, we can see errors. There's all type of errors that we can see. Again, the show interface, blah, 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 or show interface gigabit zero one or show interface fast ethernet zero one. That's going to tell us more about these errors, right? So like, for example, this is an example of the show interface command, right? So we've got, I've got circled here, the input errors. And also right here, the output errors, right? Now input errors, basically the counter is going to increase right there. It says zero, right? It says zero right here, but it's going to increase when the interface receives any frame with any kind of error. It includes runs, giants, no buffer available, CRC errors, etc. Well, what's a run? Well, right here, it tells you right there. Runs are ethernet frames that are less than 64 bytes. It's named the way it sounds, a run, right? Something that's really small. So smaller than 64 bytes, that's going to cause an error because it's expecting to be a, uh, you know, the other size is expecting a certain size. So that's going to cause errors when it's seeing frames that are smaller than 64 bytes right there. Giants are obviously frames that are, that exceed the uh, IEEE 802.3 frame size, which is 15, 18 bytes or 1,518 bytes, which are also also called uh, jumbo frames and also have an incorrect FCS or frame check sequence is basically a way to check for errors. That's what FCS is. Um, and output errors right here is the same as input errors, but for sent packets. So when we have packets that are being sent and there's an error leaving that interface, one of the exiting interface is called the egress interface. If there's an error there, that output right there, this increase, this will increase right here. The output error is going to increase. So right there, say zero, but you'll see the number keep going up. So you'll have to keep refreshing by just like, you know, you just type show interface FA00 and you run that command again, you'll see, oh, that number's going up. It's not going to go up like in real time. You just got to keep running this show interface command and you'll see the number going up. And then throttles is when the interface fails to buffer the incoming packet. Then then this is considered a throttle. And CRC errors, this is also called where the basically cyclical redundancy checksum errors. That means the checksum was generally was generated by the sender does not match the checksum. The receiver calculated on land this typically occurs when you have issues with cabling or defective network cards. So basically, when you have some kind of CRC errors, that's something you don't want to see. It's, it's, it's an error. It's going to cause slowdown in your network. And again, that's typically a cabling issue, a layer one issue, something. Just replace the cable. Again, the, the show interface command. I'm like, I'm going to keep showing y'all this. I'm going to keep showing y'all this show command. This is super important. You know, you don't want to memorize, but you, the more you look at it, you'll know exactly. Okay. Boom. I know layer one is over here and layer two is right there. You're, like the more you see this command, the quicker you'll memorize it. Same thing with the other show commands. Know your show. A mismatch in duplex. Now what's duplex? We talked about that also, I believe in the ethernet shared segment video, we've got full duplex and half duplex. Again, think about it. Think about like a two way radio for half duplex, right? A half duplex, only one person could talk at a time, as you can see right here at the bottom. One person could talk at a time. This person is sending, only one can person can send at a time, right? So just like a two-way radio, hey, how's it going? And then the other person got to stop talking and then the other one's going to go, I'm okay, go ahead. They can't talk at the same time. That's considered half duplex, right? Full duplex is you guessed it when two people could talk at the same time, just like a cell phone or a telephone, right? We could both talk at the same time. That's considered full duplex. The same thing with two switches connected to each other. You can have either half duplex or full duplex. Switch interfaces that support full and half by default will auto negotiate what duplex to use. So when you, when you take the switch out the box, right? Or you take a router out the box, typically the ports are set to auto negotiate. So it's going to be like, oh, you're set to half duplex. Well, then let me set mine to have duplex as well so that we, we can match. If you have a duplex, one that's half duplex and a switch that's full duplex, you're going to see errors, specifically an error like this. You're going to see, it's going to say duplex mismatch. Not, it depends on, on what type of switch you have, but it's going to say duplex mismatch and it's going to tell you which port it is and stuff like that, right? Some might do that. You know, it depends on how you got logging set up and things like that, right? So the typical symptoms of a duplex mismatch on full duplex side of the link, you're going to see high FCS errors. Typical symptoms of a duplex mismatch on a half duplex side of the link, you're going to see high collisions, specifically late collisions. In general, network slowdowns are seen on links with duplex mismatch. So when we have one side is half, the other side is running at full duplex, 
you're going to get that error and you'll see, you know, a network slowdown. You'll maybe see some bottlenecking. You'll see all kind of like crazy stuff going on, right? Well, that's why we want to set it to auto for the most part or don't. Sometimes you could, you know, sometimes you might have to hard code. We call it hard coding when you like you need to put this switch on half duplex for whatever reason. Maybe you got a printer connected to the other side because that printer can only run half duplex. So the switch gonna have to run it half duplex as well. Therefore, you might have to hard code the speed. Nine times out of 10, it's best to set it to auto or just leave it blank. And then that'll let you, you know, uh, let it auto negotiate that way. You could also have a mismatch in speed, right? Now there's different types of speeds you can have right here, as you can see. You can have 10 megabits per second, 100 megabits a second, or 1,000 megabits a second. Sometimes they, uh, that's also what? A gig, right? So almost like a duplex mismatch. If you have one device, let's say the switch, the switch is set to 100 gigabytes per second, right? But the printer that's connected to it can only send gigabytes per second. If there's a speed mismatch, you're going to see the, the, the link is going to go down. If you have two switches connected to each other and the speed for some reason is hard coded at 100 megabits per second and the other one's set to 1000 megabits per second or a gigabyte, right? You're going to see a speed mismatch, right? I don't believe you're going to see an error. I, I can't remember. I got I to test my hardware, but I tried in Packet Tracer. It just take the link down. Basically, you're just going to see it's going to say down, down, not connect. So this right here, you're going to see down, down, not connect. When you have a speed duplex, just like this right here, mismatch. When you have a speed mismatch, that's what you're going to see your show interface status. Down, layer one layer two down and the interface status is not connect i don't believe you're gonna get an error like you know with uh with a duplex mismatch but for sure it's gonna take the link down if you got a speed mismatch where you've manually configured this speed on both sides of the link that will typically bring the interface down again the show interface status this command is so important it's so important well this is not show interface status my bad this is show interface and then the interface right so we run that command we can see what the speed is set to right? That's show interfaces and then the name of the interface. In this case, it's FA01. Now, the other command, uh, this is a typo right here. That's not show interface status. This is actually show interface status. You can see what this duplex, this one's set to auto, and also the speed. So it's set to, uh, the speed is set to 10 megabytes per second, whereas the other switch could be whatever. They got to match or else you're going to have a speed mismatch and that's going to take the link down. So you need to make sure, you know, if you have computer to set to uh 10 megabytes per second which port that is connected to need to also either auto negotiate at 10 megabits per second or it need to be hard coded at 10 megabits per second they got the match whatever the case may be or else you're gonna get a speed mismatch that is all i got for y'all today that is my youtube page that is my twitter handle and that is my ig follow me on either of those social media platforms if you want to connect with me on a more personal level Please leave me a comment below hit that like button please 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 subscribe if you want to see some more of this material right here i'm going to try to turn the i know i keep saying this i've been saying that all of last year but i'm gonna try to do better this year with these ccna videos i'm not even studying for the ccna like i already took the exam a couple years ago but i just like going to the fundamentals and i just love i'm just passionate about this stuff plus i love helping people anyways for now please comment like subscribe to the network